This morning, Secretary of State Tony Blinken is back in the Middle East, his 11th trip to the region since the October 7th Hamas terror attacks. He's right now meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Israeli officials just releasing this photo of the two at the Prime Minister's office in Jerusalem. The mission, Blinken, is hoping to find a diplomatic breakthrough if, po if it exists still amid the escalating conflicts in Gaza and in Lebanon. In Beirut overnight, more Israeli strikes against Hezbollah near Lebanon's largest public hospital killed at least 13 people. Israel at the same time we know is continuing to plan its retaliation against Iran for its unprecedented missile attack on Israel earlier this month. Joining us right now, retired U.S. Army Major Mike Lyons. It's great to see you. So he's in Israel and before he took off, the Secretary of State sent out this tweet, kind of maybe outlining the goal here and the mission. On my way to Israel and other stops to the Middle East for intensive discussions about the importance of ending the war in Gaza, returning the hostages to their families, and alleviating the suffering of the Palestinian people. That tells you what about the actual immediate mission that you think Tony, Tony Blinken is on right now? A lot of aspirational goals there. Look, Henry Kissinger-like, 11th time now, a lot of subtle diplomacy taking place, but uh, he's re probably recognizing a ceasefire is not in the offing. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. So let's see what he can do on the side to get hostages back. But uh, Israel doesn't know who, even, who to negotiate with on right. Gaza and from Hamas right now. So that, that's a, a big unknown. There's likely being pressure put on the Netanyahu administration in order to probably scale back on things as clearly, I think Israel's looking at this as a generational opportunity to go against Iran when the time comes. I've got about two weeks now, obviously two weeks before the election to do something. I think they're going to likely take advantage of it. So I think it's maybe one last final warning from the, our administration, from President Biden to Benjamin Netanyahu with regard to what he'd like to see them do. And then also add into this conversation the equation of Hezbollah in the north, right? You've mm -hmm. got they, Hezbollah tried to tried to launch um, a missile attack on a military base near Tel Aviv overnight just today. And also today, Israel launched multiple strikes into southern Lebanon. That is that the fighting there is not abating. That is not slowing down. Just yesterday, the U.S. envoy um, Amos Hochstein was in Beirut and, and he said this. While we spent 11 months containing the conflict, we were not able to resolve it. The situation has escalated out of control as we feared that it could. He's talking about it in Lebanon, right? How dangerous is that situation becoming in kind of the greater context of what we're discussing right now? Just as dangerous as Israel's clear military objectives in that part of, uh, of the battle uh, to try to move their citizens back in there. They claim they've taken about 60% of their rocket capability out. They still have tremendous amount of ability to come, come across the border and attack into Israel. Um, but, you know, Israel is fighting really a two-front war, and that third front will be Iran when they decide to go uh, and to retaliate for what happened on October 1st. Um, there's much more capability in the north from Hezbollah. They do have it, and that's why the decapitation strategy there with the pagers, walkie-talkies, is going to prove out to be a, a lot more uh, resourceful and a lot more effective because of their inability to really respond back. Let me ask you something, uh, because there's new, some of the new reporting in is that U.S. officials had previously hoped that a ceasefire in Gaza would lead to to a separate ceasefire deal between Hezbollah and Israel. But there's no indication, obviously, that the war in Gaza is slowing or will be ending anytime soon. The reporting now is that the Biden administration is instead arguing that the two conflicts be looked at and addressed separately. That means what in, ter in, in terms of Israel's approach and the United States' approach now? I'm not sure how you can compartmentalize these two. Right. I mean, Israel is fighting this like a superpower with intelligence, airstrikes, decapitation strategies. Right. They're going to continue to do this, and they're not going to stop. Again, I said before, generational opportunity to go after Iran now, now that uh, Hamas is so weakened as well as Hezbollah. So to try to compartmentalize it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Israel looks at this as one big thing, one big fight. Yeah, I mean, in, and Hezbollah began yeah. starting this round of attacks right after October 7th in, you know, in um, solidarity with Hamas, we know. The FBI, when you talk about this kind of generational opportunity to take on Iran, what do you think of this leak investigation that the United States is now leading? The FBI is leading the investigation, and our reporting seems to suggest from our colleagues is that they don't seem to think this is any kind of a hack, and it was an Iranian targeted a hack. Um, instead, a, a leak from the inside of highly classified documents that outline Israel's plans for a possible, potential plans for a potential strike yeah. on Iran. How does something like this impact what Israel decides to do when it comes to Iran, do you think? 
Whatever Israel does, it'll be very creative, likely something maybe we haven't even thought of what they're going to do yet. But this leak is significant. It came from that's at a very high level, five eyes countrywide yeah. on it. So um, I think it's a little bit of a shot across the bow at Israel from a warning perspective, you know, one more shot before this election, before they do something. Uh, but, but, the, but Israel likely is not documenting a lot of this anyway. So, so a lot of this intelligence is all a little bit maybe of a game that's still being played as, uh, you know, Israel chooses to, to respond when they want to respond. Um, but again, I think it's more or less this administration trying to put this one final bit of pressure on mm -hmm. Israel not to escalate. I just don't see it happen. Yeah, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, John.